What's up, CFO gang? It's your boy, Jay Tuck. Real Cowboys fans stand up, and yo, it's game week, and what I want to do today is dive into the Philadelphia Eagles offense. So, you know, before we get started, there's been a question I've been asked a lot on social media, on Twitter, follow me, your boy, JTuck151, right? Like, yo, Tuck, from what we see, it feels like the Eagles tip their snap count, and I'm going to show you a few examples of what I think people are talking about, but why you also have to be cautious with it. Now, to be completely honest, they do it a little bit more frequently on the road than they do at home. And y'all know that we play in Philly on Sunday. So you'll see it kind of sparingly, but you won't see it often. But I want to kind of explain what you might hear, you know, maybe other content creators, other media people talk about when it comes to the Eagles offense. So what you'll see right here, you'll see their right guard. And what he does, he looks back at Jalen Hurts. You'll see Jalen Hurts lift his legs and the signal. Then he'll tap Jason Kelsey. And then there's the snap, right? So that's where people are saying like, okay, well, Tuck, whenever you see that, just go because you know they're going to snap the ball. Now, and you know what I'm saying? In a perfect world, that makes absolute sense. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think that the Eagles are that dumb to tip their snap count every play. And you'll see on this play right here, right? They'll kind of do the same thing, but there'll be a hesitation with it. See? Boom. So if you would have went, you would have jumped offside. So that's why you have to be cautious with it. Now, I will say this. Once they reset and they show the play and you see that the wide receiver went in motion, right, to an empty back formation, then more than likely you can go. But it's still kind of a risk, right? So it's more of a chess game that the Eagles are playing with their offensive line because you'll see in this game versus the Jets, they'll do it right here. And then it's offsides. He jumped way too quick. He jumped too quickly because he thought he was timing the snap. And this is the risk that you run. So the Eagles are dead dumb, bro, where they're going to tap Jason Kelsey. And every time he taps Jason Kelsey, that's when the ball is going to come out. But it will kind of give you a close signal. Now, here's what I'll say. Would I suggest that you go after Jalen Hurts on the snap count or the touch? Absolutely not. But what I would say you would do, you should shift. So pretty much if you're lined up in this B gap and that's where you're going to slant, maybe you don't come out in your base formation. Maybe as soon as he taps, you shift over into the B gap or shift over to the A gap. Or if you're a linebacker, you might stack over this A gap right here and then maybe bail out on the tap and then make Jalen Hurts make the read post snap. But as far as just tapping and going, all right, you're going to run the risk. And we all know the Dallas Cowboys have way too many penalties to get cute, and we definitely can allow the Philadelphia Eagles to do that against us on Sunday. Now, when it comes to the Eagles' offense, man, it starts and it ends with A.J. Brown. I think last year it was more based around Jalen Hurts, but this year it starts and it ends with A.J. Brown. Like You definitely have to stop A.J. Brown because he's the engine, he's the steam of this offense, and he's off to an incredible start. He's like on a tear right now, right? So if you let him go, start getting things going, it definitely opens up in their offense. So right here, you'll see them down here in a stack formation, stack set, and you're going to see this a lot. They, they like to stack their wide receivers. And what's the benefit of stacking your wide receivers? Well, you can't get up and press, right? If you're trying to play man, you can't get up physical on them because it gives you free releases, just like why the Cowboys play a lot of bunch as well. But you'll see them stack down low. And you have a play action, just a simple little underneath route to A.J. Brown. And these are the things that, you know, the Eagles try to get him involved into the game plan early. Now, I know there was kind of a little spat, a little bit of divanish, you know, earlier on. Kind of like what the Cowboys went through with CeeDee Lamb, but then finally the light bulb kicked on. Like, yo, just give A.J. Brown the ball. So when it comes to the Eagles offense, you definitely have to scheme around him and make sure that you're focused and aware of where he is at at all times. Now, on this next play, it shows some of the talent that the Eagles have when it comes to their offense. And honestly, like, they really don't have too many holes in their offense or any weak spots. I mean, their offensive line is solid. Um, they have a dual running backs. They have wide receiver core. They have Jalen Hurts as a versatile weapon as well. If I had to say what is their biggest weakness offensively, it'll be their uh, offensive coordinator and Brian Johnson, right? So we have to cope. He kind of dummies out a little bit. But you'll see the motion swift out and go into an empty formation. And what it does, right, it gives you the tails. It gives Jalen Hurts his tails, right? that they're playing man-to-man -man defense because what you're going to see is number 52, a linebacker lined up on Swift. Now, Swift is more of those balanced running backs that can do a lot of different things, especially in the passing game as well. So you're going to take that matchup. You know, you got a shifty running back versus a big clunky linebacker. Let's see what we can do. And Swift runs a great route, selling the inside, getting upside on the outside shoulder. 
and stacking him on top, Jalen just sells it just a little bit, right? So, you know, that just kind of shows the weaponry that they have with their offense. And honestly, from the Cowboys standpoint, I would like to see us do this with Tony Pollard a lot more because Tony Pollard was a wide receiver, right? So if you get Tony Pollard lined up on a, wide, a linebacker, I'm taking that matchup. And remember, if we go back to the Chargers game, when we saw Tony Pollard run that wheel route, it was open. Dak just sold it just a little bit. On this play right here, you see that the Eagles are coming out in a two-by-two two set. And, you know, they're lined up the insides. And you have A.J. Brown lined up on the inside down here below. And this kind of shows the power of A.J. Brown, right? Because he's fighting through this man coverage, going to run this corner route. He's getting held for dear life, but he doesn't care. Gets the release. And that's easy money. So, you know, A.J. Brown is a physical, physical corner. Like, he's one of the toughest physical corners in the NFL. You know, he kind of reminds me a little bit of Dez. You know what I'm saying? Like, how Dez was kind of our, you know, uh, engine and that physicality and our attitude. That's what A.J. Brown is bringing to this Philadelphia Eagles offense. The main difference is they're actually using A.J. Brown like a, y re a number one wide receiver and targeting him heavily. Now, here's what I will say. The one thing I will say about Jalen Hurts, though he's improved as a passer, when he locks on to a wide receiver, he's locking on. He's not coming up off of it, right? So when he has his mind made up that he's going to A.J. Brown, he's going to A.J. Brown. So, you know, there's definitely going to be opportunity to make plays on the ball, right? Because, you know, when you look at the difference between the Eagles offense from last year versus this year, they're not very RPO-ish. Like, they don't run a lot of those, you know, set run plays that they had for him last year, right? They're trying to make him more of a quote-unquote passer. Now, me personally, I hate that because you're kind of nerfing his ability, but they just paid him a lot of money, and they're not going to try to run him all, you know, nilly-willy out there and take those hits because if he goes down, it definitely changes the course of their season. So they're very strategic about how they use Jalen Hurts. But, you know, under pressure... His passing completion percentage drops drastically. I think it goes from like 74% to like 54% completion percentage when he's under pressure. But how he makes up for it, right, is he'll just use his legs and get the hell up out of there. So something you definitely have to be aware of when you're getting pressure on Jalen Hurts, you have to play assignment-based football. You can't go out there playing hero ball because we'll see here in a second. If you give him the slightest crease, he'll take off with it and he'll make things happen on his own. On this play right here, once again, you see the stack formation. Drops back, and there he is. There he's off to the races, right? So that shows that playmaking ability of Jalen Hurts. There was nothing there. Because if you look at it, everything is back. Because, you know, watch this, like, cat and mouse game. You're playing with this corner right here, right? So this corner is kind of symbolizing that maybe he could be playing in zone, right? So he's looking directly at Jalen, which sometimes that's the indication. So there, boom. Jalen sends the signal with his legs. This guy comes out, this corner comes out a little bit. Jalen's like, nah, I, actually, they're playing man. He says, damn, they caught me. So I'm going to go back in, pretend I'm playing zone. Then come out and play man. And if you look at everything, everything is pretty much bag. This is bag. This is bag. This is bag. This is bag. I mean, the only thing that you could have had was this running back, you know, sliding out here in the flat. But there was too much pressure right here. But it shows the versatility of Jalen Hurts just saying, you know what? Ain't nothing there. I'm just going to make something happen, right? And we're starting to see that from the Cowboys' perspective with Dak Prescott. Sometimes you got to just have a little recess in your game. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes everything's not going to go perfectly. But, you know, when you watch the Washington pass rush, good pass rush up front. You got Chase Young, who's no longer there, right? Everyone's getting pressure. You have containment. But all Jalen needs is the slightest little crease. And he's off to the races. You know, and once he's off to the races, he definitely just moves the chain. So that's something you definitely have to be aware of because if you're just rushing up field and you leave those creases for Jalen Hurts, he's going to take off. He's going to take off, make a play, keep the chain moving, and those things can hurt you throughout the course of a game. So you definitely have to, you know, be very aware of that. Now, would I spy him? Probably not initially, but I feel like the Cowboys linebackers with Marquise Bell, they're a little bit more agile because they're converted safeties playing linebacker so they can probably run with Jalen but also then you also have to deal with the power of Jalen Hurts as well on this play right here just a quick bubble screen to Smitty right you're gonna get got it out there blocking you're gonna get him out in space and just turn it upfield so they're, they're not afraid to take the easy throws and let their playmakers be playmakers boom get Smitty upfield there you go all right once again You'll see right here, what do we have down low? You see that stack formation. 
and you have a play action and just a slant. The slant flat concept. And it's almost like a damn near a pick play up here up top with AJ Brown and Goddard, right? Because AJ is pretty much just picking off this, this corner right here. And just a quick flat route out to Goddard. So, like I said, they're not afraid to take the easy plays. Like, they'll take that and just let their playmakers be playmakers. Um, on this next play right here, once again, you kind of see him having his mind made up when it comes to Jalen Hurts. And, you know, number 13, I always call him kind of like your, your knockoff A.J. Brown because when you're watching the game, he looks just like A.J., right? But you see that the, the commanders are, are manned up. And you have him running this clear out route. And Jalen reads the man. But you have this over with A.J. Brown. And once this clear out is clear, I mean, I'm not sure about y'all. Maybe he thought this was A.J., you know what I'm saying? But you have that clear out and you have this this deep over route with A.J. Brown. Like, if you get A.J. the ball in, in, in motion, let him get upfield, I mean, he might go to the crib. But, you know, he takes the shot and it's incomplete. But I will say this. They are taking a lot more shots downfield compared to last year as well. And overall, like that's been one of Jalen's strongest aspects of his game. Now, where the turnovers do come, it is from the deep shots, right? So it's going to be some opportunity, but you can't fall asleep at the wheel. Now, I think their game plan is going to be a lot different from the Cowboys standpoint, because I think they're going to try to run the ball. They're going to want to get Swift involved a little bit more because they're going to want to test our run defense. But when you get the opportunity, you're going to have to make Jalen Hurts throw in tight windows because that's not really his game. So if you kind of get up there and press a little bit and play aggressive, it's going to be up to our corners and our secondary to cover their wide receiver core. But the most important thing, you have to limit the big plays, the big momentum shifts. And like this play right here versus the Jets, this is just big boy football. This is just Jalen going to, you know, Super Saiyan mode. He's, you know, pushing the defender off of one hand, has the outside hand free, throwing to A.J. Brown for the completion. Like those are the type of things that can change the course of the game. And then also this play right here, this is just talent. You know, this is just D. Smith going deep on this deep post route and going up to get it. And that's not really even D. Smith's game. That's not his game. Now, I'll take these fantasy points from you, D. Smith, but that's really not his game. But you can't allow them to get the big play because, you know, in a lot, they've been in a lot of close games. They've been in a lot of dog fights. And it seems like the big plays is what changes the course of the game. So if you really want to stop this Philadelphia Eagles offense, what you have to do is get interior pressure, play assignment football, when it comes to your pass rush, limit to the big plays and create tight, tight windows to make Jalen Hurts throw in. And I think the Cowboys defense should get back on track on Sunday versus the Philadelphia Eagles, man. So comment, like, subscribe. It's your boy, Jay Tuck. Follow me on all social media platforms. I want everyone to stay safe, stay blessed, stay encouraged, and go Cowboys. Peace.